Paul Rosenstein Rodin was born in 1902 in what is now Poland, and he passed away in 1985. He spent much of his career at the LSE, the World Bank, and MIT. Paul Rosenstein Rodin, perhaps more than any other economist, gave rise to the explosion of thought about development economics which followed World War II. In a 1943 paper, Rosenstein Rodin gave the famous example of a shoe factory. Let's say we take 20,000 workers from the countryside, move them to a city, and have them start producing shoes. For Rosenstein Rodin, this isn't nearly enough, because who is there to buy the shoes? And the workers who are producing the shoes, what else do they buy with their income? But if instead you imagine 50 or 100 or 200 factories opening up in the city at the same time, all of a sudden there's a high level of economic activity. It is coordinated and it is self-supporting. For Rosenstein Rodin, that is the path toward economic development and growth. He coined the classic phrase, the big push. The big push comes when a developing economy advances on many fronts at the same time. There is, in his view, a minimum scale for savings, investment, and demand, so the key to growth is thinking big. It's not about gradual improvements. It's about making a big leap from the side of being an underdeveloped country to being a rapidly growing country. Rosenstein Rodin believed in what are called increasing returns to scale. That is, the more economic activity you undertake, the more profitable your remaining economic activity will be. In his view, how can we push an economy into growth? It's a pretty simple recipe. It requires government investment on a large scale. It means building a lot of infrastructure, like roads, bridges, and dams. Overall, it means thinking and planning big. And it also means open trade to have a larger size of market, which makes it easier to support all of these new factories. These ideas had a major impact on development planning after World War II, and they remain influential to this day, including in the work of Jeffrey Sachs. Nonetheless, there have been a lot of criticisms. One point is that the Rosenstein-Rodan formula neglects agriculture, but agriculture is a big part of a lot of developing economies. Another criticism is that government planning doesn't always work well. It often takes place in the interests of the planners, not the citizens. Corruption is a big problem. When you build large projects with significant revenue streams, very often the government planners skim money off of the top. The theory of the big push, it also neglects culture. There may be cultural preconditions for growth, and simply to try to mimic what growth looks like, putting in a lot of factories, putting in a lot of bridges, without the preconditions, you may end up with a kind of disaster. This is sometimes called the white elephant problem. There are numerous examples of developing economies deciding what we need is a big dam, what we need is a big factory. The rest of the growth never comes. They're stuck with this somewhat useless dam or factory out in somewhere which has become the middle of nowhere, and it doesn't lead to the big push. Finally, if you look at the data, we find that, with some exceptions, most growth is actually fairly gradual. It doesn't come in the form of a big explosion. Some of the East Asian countries are an exception to this principle, but overall, in the actual studies of economic growth, it seems that most economic growth occurs bit by bit in gradual fashion. For these reasons, Rosenstein Rodin's big push idea remains important, but it's not really an idea that everyone agrees with or has accepted.